All right, let's continue solving Ivan of Code problems for 2019. This is day three. So day three is called crossed wires. And basically the problem overall is pretty simple. It's just the idea that we have these lines that are drawn from an origin point. So for example, we might go right eight from here. That's eight right. And then five up, five left, and then three down. That'd be an example of a wire, basically. This is describing how a wire is traced over a circuit board. <clears throat> now in this problem we're always going to be given two wires and we're told that they intersect at some point or multiple points so part one of day three wants us to just find the intersection that has the shortest manhattan distance from the origin or the starting point now if you did any problems last year you probably ran into the manhattan distance it was there a lot last year but basically it's just the distance if you went right and then up, for example. So if you're trying to get here, it would just be the distance right up. That's all it is. Um, nothing too crazy there. Um, a little formula you can use to calculate that because you it should be go it should go in both directions. You know the intersection could be to the left of it. But anyways, we'll get to that shortly. So they give a couple examples that are really useful. But anyways, I'm just going to jump right into the problem. So here's our two wires. I'm just going to paste them into my Haskell file right here. Wire. 1 equals that, and wire 2 equals this. Now, I don't want to write a parser, so I'm going to use a nice little trick, and I'm going to make a new data type, which is going to be called a dir, as in a direction. And a dir is just going to be up int, or down int, or left int, or right int. And why did I do these abbreviated forms? Well, because it's pretty simple to just say, go into my input <clears throat> and replace all R's with R space globally. R space globally. Okay, so now we have an actual valid Haskell data structure. So we can do that for a couple of these. We can do right, left, <clears throat> up and down and now if we run Haskell this file um, something is wrong let's see <clears throat> line 8 because 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 hmm Oh, silly. I have to indent the uh, parenthesis, the uh, square bracket that ends it. There we go. Okay, so we have our valid input. So what we need to do is we need to, what I'm going to do at least is turn it into sets, turn them into sets, and then just actually use the set intersection and find the minimum value that intersects. So to turn these into sets, I'm going to build a new one to set, um, which basically is going to take a wire, which is a list of dir. <coughs> and turn it into an s.set, so import s. s.set of points, so int, int, x, y. To set, to actually build the setup, I'm going to use unfolder, so import data.list, unfold r, which is just a way to perform an operation over a list until some terminal point and accumulate the results of each operation as you go. So what we want to unfold R over some step function. You only have to define one step with unfold. It's pretty cool actually. And then this is gonna take in our durs. So actually we don't even have to pass those. But what we do have to do is once this is done, we wanna say set from list because our unfold is gonna return back a list. <clears throat> so unfold needs to take oh you know what unfold might need an initial state I don't remember exactly so let me google unfolder <clears throat> unfold does unfolder does need an initial state so that's going to we have to actually compose these so our initial state is just going to be let's see it's going to be our starting point 
And uh, I actually think that's it. We just need the points here. Yeah. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to step. And this is taking in... Oh, wait. I might be wrong about that. Unfolder takes an input. And then... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just takes one single input. So actually I am wrong about a couple things. Um, this should take our durs in. And then we're actually going to return... We're going to pass to unfolder the pair of our durs and the point we're at. So basically this looks like if we have an empty list, which means we have nothing, no steps to make, well, then we're just going to return back nothing. So unfolder, you can use an option to indicate whether or not you're done folding. The first value in the just um, case would be the actual result that you want to return, and the second value would be your next state to process. <clears throat> so if we get up of zero, and then some other values, and we get a point, let's say P, well, then what we actually want to do in that case is we want to stop. See, technically, moving up zero doesn't mean anything. Uh, so that's kind of one of our terminal cases. So what we want to do is we want to actually take another step, and we just want to go the rest in P. And this case works for down, up, down, left, and right. So if we ever get a zero, we basically want to be done. But if we get something non-zero, which this is kind of an assumption that they're all positive, which I know they are, but it might be a bad assumption, but it's probably okay for this problem. Um, if we get something positive, we want to do something a little bit different. So we want to return back just, and remember this has to be a pair of our result coupled with a new state. So basically the result is going to be, let's see, um, a new point. So if we go up, this is y plus 1. So let's go ahead and let's just destructure this point in this case. And the second thing has to be our new state process. So it's going to be something like this, except n has to be n minus 1. This is a little bit ugly, but it'll serve our purposes, okay? So I think that's what we want. Let me make sure at least this line with the others kind of compile. Yep, okay. So again, it's going to be a little ugly, but we're just going to repeat this process. So if we're going down, that's minus in the y-axis. This should be a down, and this should be a down minus and then if we're going left this should be a minus in the x-axis axis and if we're going right this should be a plus in the x okay oh this has to be minus this has to be plus yeah okay so that's the basic idea here. Let's make sure everything still works okay. Okay, so far so good. So what do we want to do? We actually want to convert both of our wires to sets. So to do that, we can just say um, wire one set equals to set wire one, wire two set equals to set wire two. Okay, and then the next thing we can do is we can actually use the intersection function to find the points where these two sets intersect. So intersections is going to be s dot intersect wire one set, wire two set. And you know what? Let's make intersections a list. Because what we really want is we want the intersection with the minimum Manhattan distance. And I think the Manhattan distance is what this problem actually wants us to return. What is the fewest combined steps the wires must take to reach an intersection? Oh, sorry, that's part two. Spoilers, what is the Manhattan distance? Okay, so to do the Manhattan distance, um, basically what we want is we want A and a B. We want two points, A prime, B prime. Now, one of these is always gonna be zero, zero, but just to kind of fully flesh out what this looks like, basically, the Manhattan distance is the absolute of A minus A prime plus the absolute of B minus B prime. And that's the quantity A minus A prime, the quantity B minus B prime. And again, one of these is always going to be zero, zero. But that's how you get the Manhattan distance. Um, that formula is pretty readily available online. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, our answer then 
is going to be the minimum of the map of man Manhattan distance from zero zero over our intersections. So let's go ahead and let's print answer. But I think that that's all we need to do. I probably did something wrong. Yep, intersect intersection. <clears throat> okay, we run it and we get back 209, which is the correct answer for part one, at least in my input. So how do we solve part two? Part two is a little more challenging. Basically, we want to know, instead of the Manhattan distance, which is pretty easy, we want to know the number of steps that we had to take to actually get to the, to the point of intersection. And we want the point of intersection with the fewest combined number of steps. So basically, we're just walking the wires and figuring out if we have to step across both of them, what has the shortest sum distance. So... <clears throat> To do this, we're going to start with pretty much our solution we had for part one. Now, I am actually going to start using the data map instead of a set because in a map, I can very easily track along with each point. I can track the distance. Um, this might not be the most efficient way to solve it, but it seemed to work fine for my purposes and be relatively efficient. So instead of two set, I want to call this two map now. We'll call this wire one map, wire two map. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to do an M from list instead of a set from list. And then we also need to track a little bit more here. We need to track the number of steps we're taking. So I'm just going to pass a new value along in our state, which is the number of steps. So if we get to any zero cases, we just want to carry on. Um, we don't want to track that as another step that was taken because we didn't technically take a step. So we're not going to count that, but that passes the step along everywhere. So now what we have to do is if we have an actual step to take, we basically got to track that as another tuple here. That's a little ugly, honestly. Um, this is actually very ugly, if I'm being entirely honest. Um, this isn't a great, this isn't great, but it does the purpose okay, as I said before. Um, so actually, I think that's all we need to do. We just need to duplicate it. So before I do that, I'm not feeling super confident that this is correct. So I'm going to run it and I'm going to uh, kind of ignore all the other parts of the answer. Yeah. <laughs> why wasn't I, why wasn't I confident that this is correct? Hmm. Um, okay. So something's up and it's pretty nasty. So let's walk through it. Um, basically we have, oh, that needs to take in steps as well. Maybe that's all it is. Hey, that was all it is. <laughs> that was kind of a crazy error for something. Um, anyways, I'm just actually going to duplicate this case and re-key in this um, because I feel more comfortable doing that. So down is negative in the Y. Down is negative in the Y. Oh, and we have to say down. Did I say down? Yes, I did. So left <clears throat> is negative in the X one and it's negative in the X. <clears throat> yep, 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 yep. So far so good. And then right is positive in the X. Okay. Okay, so, so far so good. So what do we wanna do now? Well, we still can go and find the intersections. So if we um, convert these, we can actually say, um, m dot keys set of w one m for example, and then we can do the same thing for two, and we can actually build up our original sets that we had. And now we don't need the Manhattan distance for part two, but we will probably use our intersections. <clears throat> and there you go, there are the intersections. So, how do we actually get the answer now? Well, we have all of the steps we took, and we have all of the intersections. So it's really a game of kind of stitching those two together. So our answer <clears throat> is gonna be, well, something. Um, and what is that something? Well, it's gonna be the minimum. Of course it's gonna be something. <clears throat> it's gonna be the minimum of basically our intersections. And what do we have to do with our intersections? Well, we have to map the sum distance 
over them. So what is the sum distance? Well, I'm going to use um, maybe here. I'm going to use a do, do notation. So a wire one, whatever you want to call it, um, p1, d, it's is really a distance, d1, is going to be m dot lookup in wire one map the, uh, the point. Basically, uh, these intersections are points. So we want to look that up in <clears throat> wire one map version. And then two is going to be the same thing, but in two. And if this succeeds, we want to return back pure of D1 plus D2. And there's one problem here. Minimum won't work over a list of maybe. So what we're going to do is we're going to import data dot maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> cat maybes. And we're just going to cat maybes right here. So let's go ahead and run this. I probably made a mistake, but we'll see what happens. Oh, and I didn't make a mistake, but did we get the correct answer? That's really the question. Yep, we did get the correct answer. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, that was day three, parts one and two, 2009, advent of code.